People in the United States will now have a reduced quarantine period in some cases if they're exposed to COVID-19. The Centers for Disease Control now says people can end their isolation after 10 days and after just seven days if they get a negative test. Previously, they had to quarantine for 14 days. The CDC says the new guidance reflects the latest science. For more, I want to bring in Dr. Eileen Marty. She is a distinguished professor of infectious diseases, outbreak response expert at the Herbert Wertheim College of Medicine at Florida International University. And she joins me from Miami Beach, Florida. Thank you for your time today, Dr. Marty. Pleasure. Let me ask you for your reaction to the CDC changing these quarantine guidelines. It's always a balance. All these recommendations, you're trying to balance what's going on. And the reality is it's very challenging for a number of individuals to complete the, the ideal of 14 days. So in order to get more compliance overall and to get sure, uh, certainty that more people get tested and follow uh, the highest possible level of containment that's reasonable and doable, they've come up with, with this uh, recommendation. Of course, the testing does decrease the, the risk that they are able to transmit the infection to others. So that's how they help balance out the, the risk. So what, we're, what I'm hearing you say is the 14-day window is the best option. If you can do the 14 days for the safety of yourself and others, do the 14 days. But in some cases, you can lower it to 10 days or seven days if you get a negative test. Doesn't that put a lot of emphasis on the accuracy of the testing, though? Which we all know has some issues, and it depends on exactly which test you get, et cetera, right. et cetera. So, so yeah, there are, there are issues. And, of course, the recommendation is to use a, an RT-PCR test, which has the best sensitivity and, um, and, and you know, specificity, so that you're going to have That's the one that scratches test. the back of your brain, right? That's the, <laughs> that's well, the it, deep it, one. It doesn't... It, it, yes, it can be done that way, but we don't have to. We can we can get it from from other samples as well. It's the it's actually the platform that we use in order to detect the messenger RNA okay. uh, that 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 makes the difference as to sensitivity and specificity. Do you think, though, uh, lowering those quarantine guidelines though will help people, as you mentioned, adhere more to the protocol? Because if people think I can't quarantine for 14 days, I got to go to work, I got kids, you know, I need to get out of the house. This will help it become more palatable. Yes, uh, it's very important, however, that that the people realize that there is still a risk that they could uh, shed virus. I mean, we do know that. Uh, 95% of people by 14 days have stopped shedding virus, um, significant amounts of virus. But, um, and now we're reducing it to these lower numbers. There is still a risk that they could transmit. So they should act appropriately. They shouldn't act cavalierly right. and not wear masks and not uh, physical distance, et cetera. I have 30 seconds left to get your reaction to the news out of the UK uh, and its um, passing of the vaccine and how people will soon be vaccinated. Is the U.S. far behind? No, we're not far behind. Uh, we had a meeting yesterday from the Advisory Council on Vaccine Practices, not about approving the vaccine, but about who would get it first. Uh, there's another meeting on that on the December 4th, with, which, uh, which is uh, at the national level, uh, not just at the CDC, which is national also, but different, uh, going further into what we need to find out about how to distribute this vaccine. And then around the 8th or the 10th, we'll convene. The FDA will be very thorough. The FDA is always very thorough on this. They're, they pride themselves first on safety. That's the history of the FDA, and they will continue to do that. Nonetheless, I've looked at what the uh, UK did, how they reviewed it, how they assessed it, and it looks very, very well done. And I suspect that um, the US will follow uh, suit. Although you have to understand that this data, for example, for the Pfizer vaccine is only based on a little, about, a little bit over 9,500 people mm. receiving the two doses and another 9,500 receiving placebo and comparing those. And it's not every single uh, category of person, not immunocompromised, we're not included, pregnant women, we're not included, yeah, small children, children not included, yeah. et cetera. Okay, some caveats to be aware of. Uh, Dr. Eileen Marty, always good to have your expertise. Thank you.